Hi, in this video, we are going to see about the scheduler and we are also going to add an extra scheduler to an existing cluster. On an existing cluster, we're going to add one more scheduler. A scheduler is actually responsible for scheduling a pod on one of the available nodes. But there could be certain criteria also, such as the pod can say that this, this is the resource requirements that I have got and you need to keep me on a node which can suffice these requirements. The scheduler is also, so it is gonna check the available nodes and check its capacity and so on and then ensure that this pod can get scheduled on the node. Until then, the pod is going to be in the pending state. So this is the work of the scheduler. Once the pod gets scheduled on a node, the kubelet is going to take over and it is going to be responsible for actually executing or running the pod. Let's get into the cluster. I am on the master of a Kubernetes cluster and I'm going to check the list of pods in the cube system namespace. And I see that there is a scheduler pod at the very end. At the very end, I've got a scheduler pod, which is a scheduler running as a pod. And if I have to use one of the other pods and if I have to see which scheduler that pod is actually using, I've just copied the Calico node pod. And if I have to use the kubectl get command, if I give the output JSON pod filter, and if I filter for the spec followed by the scheduler name, I see, yes, I have to specify the cube system namespace. There is a typo. I see that this is actually scheduled on the default scheduler, which is nothing but the single scheduler pod, which is on the cluster at this moment. And if I see the logs of the scheduler pod, and if I filter for a particular number, 1025, I see that there are two ports on which the scheduler is actually serving. One is the insecure port, which is replicated, 10251, and the other one is actually the secure port, which is 10259. There was an issue with the cloud shell, so I think it just got reconnected. Okay, so we saw these are the two ports. We can make a note of these ports. We can also try to telnet the local host on the master node to see these ports are functioning. So 10251 is connected. Similarly, 10259 will also be connected. So these two ports are working. And on the new scheduler, since we are going to launch a new scheduler, we have to make use of two different ports and we also have to ensure that that ports are not being used at the moment. So let's say if I have to use 10261, I'm just adding 10. So, to be, uh, to be uniform, I'm just adding 10 to the existing port number. And if I have to use, ensure that 10261 is not existing, and I can check by this, it says it's not there. That's good. And similarly for 10269 for the secure port, this is also not there. So I can very well go ahead and use these two port numbers for the new scheduler that I'm going to make, that I'm going to create. Okay, now let's get into the manifests folder. Here, I see there is a cube scheduler configuration, which is nothing but the configuration of the existing scheduler. We can make use of this configuration. We can use this as a reference and we can create a new configuration for the extra scheduler. I'm just gonna copy this. And now, let me just go ahead and edit it. I'm going to make a few changes, which you can see now. So first of all, I'm going to change the component label to be extra scheduler. This is the pod's label, one of the pods, one of the labels of the pod, the scheduler pod. And I'm going to give it a new name. Instead of cube scheduler, I'm gonna call it extra scheduler. And what else? The command is going to be cube scheduler. It's going to be like that. And here, I'm going to specify two new ports. If you don't give it, it is going to pick the default ports which we saw earlier and it is going to create a conflict. So that is why we have to ensure that the ports are unique. I'm gonna give 10269. 
for the secure port. And for the insecure port, I'm going to give 10261. And there is one other important command that I have to specify, which is the scheduler name. This is the important thing. This is the name of the scheduler. If you don't give it, it is going to keep it as default scheduler, which you saw earlier. So in order to differentiate this, we are going to give Kubernetes extra scheduler. This configuration is very, very important. The other things, the ports, name, etc., it's fine. Like, you know, even if you give cube extra scheduler, if you don't give the scheduler name as this inside the command, it is not going to take that new name. So here I'm going to specify this is Kubernetes extra scheduler. What else? There is a health portal. Here you have 10251, which is nothing but the uh, insecure port of the old pod. For this case, I can use the secure port, which is 10269. So the screen is a bit not aligned. This is a Google Cloud Shell problem, uh, but we can see it later. Once we finish editing it, we can use the cat command to see it again. And we can also change the container, container's name. This is also optional, but in order to be uniform, we can give it extra scheduler. Control X, Y to save it. And now let's go ahead and see what we modified. Just to ensure that what we have got, uh, it has got what we expected it to have. Okay, so we have got something like, yeah, the component is taken, name is taken. We've got these commands, the scheduler name, and we're also changed the, the port number on which the health check has to happen. And we'd also changed the container name here. Okay, now, once we saved it, since we saved it already, there should be a new pod on the cube system namespace. We don't have to actually give anything like a cube cuddle create or apply for this case. It would get created automatically because it is inside the ETC Kubernetes manifest folder. So this is the new pod, cube extra scheduler k it is master zero and it is already running. We can also check the logs of this pod. And we can try to filter like we did before, or even if you don't filter, there's going to be a few number of entries, so it's fine, you don't have to really filter. There's going to be lesser number of lines here. We know that it is running now securely on this port and insecurely on this port, but this is anyway deprecated, but just to avoid conflicts, we just created, we just mentioned this also on the new configuration. Now we have the scheduler ready. We need to use, make use of the scheduler. We need to specify this scheduler inside any pod. But before that, let me just quickly go ahead and make a change, make one other change on the scheduler configuration. I can say the leader election is false because leader election is, can be kept true when we have like multiple schedulers and all of these schedulers combinedly represent a single entity and there's, there's going to be a leader election. It's like a high available scheduler, a group of schedulers, uh, and one is going to be active at one time. But in this case, we can go with false just for the sake of illustrating this example, I'm gonna keep it false. Okay, the pod should still be there. The, the, uh, the scheduler should still be there. So let me try to grab it. It is existing, the new one is still running. So we need to ensure that we are going to uh, give this name inside a pods manifest. So let me show you a manifest which I've already got for a pod. We're going to create a pod and we are going to specify the scheduler name. If you remember, we have seen this scheduler name. We tried to uh, filter it using the output JSON pod command and we tried to filter spec or scheduler name and we found it has default scheduler. But in this case, since we gave cube extra scheduler as one of the command line arguments inside the command section, we need to, we can specify this as the scheduler name and this pod can actually get scheduled because of this scheduler and not the default scheduler. Let's go ahead and create this pod. Okay, so, oh, it is already there. Let me just delete. I think I created it before. Okay. So, yeah, I need to give the pod type, isn't it? I mean, since it is a pod, I have to say, if it is a pod, I have to say PO or pods. So I missed typing the object type. So I have to specify the type of it. 
because it doesn't know what it is, PO37, if it is a pod or a deployment. No, it is deleted. So we shouldn't be having any pod in the default namespace. It is not there. Now, let's go ahead and create it. I have created it. And let me see if it is running. It's pending. It's pending. It's pending. So why is it pending is what we need to see. Okay, I think there is a scheduler problem. So this is what you see when scheduler is not found or there is something, some issue with the scheduler. Um, let's check the pod configuration again. So, so I have to check the pod configuration and ensure that it, it, I have given the details properly. So here I've, I've said the scheduler name is cube extra scheduler. Let me just go ahead to the uh, manifests folder. Okay, and let me view the extra scheduler configuration. I have to use sudo here. Okay, so let me just uh, try to edit it or get into nano to view the file in editing mode. Okay, so if I think I found it, yes. So the scheduler name is actually given as Kubernetes extra scheduler, which is wrong because in the pod I've given it cube extra scheduler. So I can remove these extra characters from the scheduler name flag and let me try to save it again. I saved it. Let me see if the pod is existing. It's running now, super. So we figured out the issue. So that is why the containers command scheduler name flag is very important. Even if you gave the name anywhere else on the pod's name or container name, it doesn't matter. You will have to give the exact name inside the container command section. Okay, the pod is now running. So let's try to describe the pod to see the events that it has got. So we have got all of these events and the first, the very first line is the scheduled event which is coming from the cube extra scheduler, which means that this scheduler is actually responsible for scheduling this pod on this node. So it has assigned this pod to this node. So this is what we come to know from here. Once it gets scheduled, the work shifts over to the kubelet, which is actually responsible for executing this pod. It is responsible for running the pod on node one. So the scheduler's work is clear from the very first event, the scheduled event. So this is how we can add an extra scheduler and we can make use of the extra scheduler on a pod. Okay, now let's try to remove the file. Let's get into the manifests folder. And I'll remove this. When I remove this file, the extra scheduler is also going to be removed automatically. Yeah, I think it's removed. I can try to filter using the grep keyword, the grep utility, the scheduler word. If I give, there's only one scheduler, which is nothing but the default scheduler. The extra scheduler is gone. But what about the pod? The pod is still running because the scheduler's task is over. It scheduled the pod and it left. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for the pod to actually wait for the scheduler or it, it doesn't have to do anything. The scheduler's task, its function is already over and, the now, and now the pod is actually relying on the kubelet. But if I delete this pod, if I delete this pod, typo, and if I recreate it, we know that the pod cannot get scheduled. Because we saw that earlier, when we gave the schedule the name wrongly, it, does, it didn't take it, right? So something similar is gonna happen now. You don't see this pod running. It will be in the pending state because the scheduler is not there. Last time, the scheduler name was different, but this time, the scheduler is not even there. So this is how, schedulers work. Hope this video was helpful. Let's finally go ahead and delete the pod to do the cleanup. And then I'll tell you the thank you note, yeah.
delete the pod and PO37. All right, the pod is now deleted. So in this video, we saw how a scheduler works, what ports it is using, and how to actually launch an extra scheduler and how to make use of that extra scheduler in a pods manifest. And uh, how about the pending state, when the pending state is actually occurring, we saw that it can happen when the scheduler name is actually mismatching or it can also happen when the scheduler doesn't even exist. So we see all these cases and I think this should have given you a fair idea on how schedulers work and how you can actually launch an extra scheduler. But yeah, we tried it with leader election, Fox. Hope this video was, was useful and thank you for watching.